In this video, I'm going to discuss the scariest mythical creatures from around the world. And of course you knew that, you read the title. This list is in order of creepy, starting with this is pretty scary, so I'm going to have to sleep with the light on for the next month. Starting with one, the Kraken. So you've probably heard of the Kraken, right? You know, the massive squid slash octopus thing, also known as the ocean's biggest troll. Known mostly for destroying boats and eating, well, people. Now, picture this. You're a sailor in the olden days, just minding your own business, navigating through the icy waters near Norway or Greenland. I'm sure we can all relate. Suddenly out of nowhere, these massive enormous tentacles emerge, wrapping around your ship like it's nothing, and in turn, completely destroying the ship and while eating everybody on board. Honestly, this creature must be boat insurance company's biggest nightmare. They're probably the only people more scared of the Kraken than the sailors themselves. It's often thought that the Kraken is a mythical creature that some say is miles in length, but I happen to think that's kind of stupid. It's more likely that our old sailor ancestors probably over-dramatized a giant squid, which can get up to like 43 feet long. So I guess what we got from this was that our ancestors are top tier yappers. Which to be fair, I don't think our current generation is much better at. I can imagine future generations trying to decipher the average person's TikTok for you page. Tragic. The Kraken is not just a legend though, it's a cultural icon. It's been chilling in poems and even video games. Even an old fancy slightly geeky poet Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote about it in one of his poems I guess. And it worked because the Kraken basically became the poster child for Beware of the Deep Sea. Number 2. The Nian. Me the Nian, a name that might not ring a bell unless you're into Chinese folklore or anything really to do with Lunar New Year celebrations. Now, this isn't your typical under the bed boogeyman. The Nian is like the ultimate party crusher of ancient China, showing up once a year to, well, basically snack on people. Yeah, not cool. Imagine this, you're chilling in ancient China, as you do, and New Year's just around the corner. Instead of worrying about resolutions, you're worrying about a giant beast that's part lion and all about the nom noms on humans. The Nian is said to be sensitive to loud noises, bright lights, and the colour red. But here's where it gets interesting. The villagers, clearly tired of getting absolutely trolled by this monster, discovered the Nian's Achilles heel. It's scared of loud noises, bright lights, and the colour red. So, what do they do? They turn the tables and throw the biggest, reddest, and noisiest noisiest party every year to scare the beast away. So, next time you see those red lanterns and hear the drums of a lion dance, remember the Nian. 3. Mothman So, our friend Mothman, as the locals call him, is not an average moth. Quite clearly. Forget about those little critters fluttering around your porch light. This guy's a whopping 7 feet tall with a windsprang that's like, hey, I might just block out the sun. And guess what? He's not a fan of the limelight. Nah, this creature is all about spreading those massive wings and zooming around giving folks the eebie-jeebies. He's thought to live in Point Pleasant, which is a small city in West Virginia. Pretty boring. Things got real in Point Pleasant, probably for the first time ever, when people started connecting Mothman sightings with the downright tragic collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1967. Imagine that. One day you're gossiping about a Mysterium flying giant, and the next day's a catastrophe with lives lost. It wasn't long before rumours started swirling around that the Mothman was either the Grim Reaper giving heads up, or was somehow involved in the disaster. Talk about a bad rep. But it's about to get wilder. American journalist, and a bit of a nerd, John Keel, swoops in with his book, The Mothman Prophecies, mixing in UFOs and other paranormal shenanigans, turning our Mothman into a superstar of the supernatural. As usual, even Hollywood even jumped on the bandwagon, with a movie that had people spooked enough to check their backyards for red-eyed flyers. However, exciting as the Mothman myth is, it is just a myth. Some folks reckon that the Mothman might have just been a case of mistaken identity. You know, I don't know, what else flies and can get quite big? A bird? But hey, Point Pleasant folks have embraced their eerie claim to fame. Throwing a Mothman festival, yes, they threw a festival about the guy who destroyed their bridge. Because why not celebrate the mysterious creature that put your town on the map, right? And get filthy rich at the expense of gullible tourists. Nice try. In the grand scheme of things, the Mothman story is a perfect cocktail of American folklore, a dash of mystery, and a splash of tragedy. Whether it's a misunderstood bird or something more spine tingling, Mothman's got us hooked on the power of a good, chilling legend. So, next time you hear a flap at night, just remember, it could be old Mothman keeping the mystery alive. 
Number four, Wendigo. The Wendigo is an American Indian folklore, and it really takes the cake when it comes to winter horror stories. Picture this, a towering skeletal figure lurking in the icy wilderness, just waiting to pounce on anyone who dares to get a little too selfish or greedy. Talk about taking the anti-greed message to a whole nother level. The origin of the Wendigo is from the olden days, when during massive famine, people would actually kind of like resort to eating each other, which is kind of disgusting, but... I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. So in effect, the Wendigo is like an ultimate cautionary tale against cannibalism. Imagine you're stuck in the freezing cold and you think, hmm, maybe I'll just nibble a bit of Bob here to survive. Boom. You're now a Wendigo, cursed to roam the frozen lands with an insatiable hunger for human flesh. It's like the universe's most extreme diet plan. Eat a human, become a monster forever. No cheat days allowed. Which... Kinda sucks, I guess. And then there's this whole Wendigo psiosis thing. It's like when you're convinced you're turning into a Wendigo that you actually start craving human flesh. Yep, it's kind of weird, but apparently this actually used to happen. In pop culture, the Wendigo has become a go-to guy for all things creepy, from horror movies to video games. This guy's everywhere, and let's be honest, a zombie-like vibe really works for those late-night scare fests. Five, Jersey Devil. Now we've got the Jersey Devil. And no, it's not your average New Yorker. The Jersey Devil is an American legend that could give Hollywood a run for its money. Literally. Hailing down from the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, this cryptide is like a mashup of all animals that didn't make the cut for Noah's Ark. Horsehead, bat wings, hooves, and a forked tail. This creature's designer definitely had a field day. The story goes that Mother Leeds, who's this like really crazy witch lady, was apparently not a fan of family planning. And for some reason, because she was angry she had a 13th child, she decided to curse it, which is mean, I suppose. And the result's kind of what you'd expect from a cursed baby. When the baby demon thing first popped out of the womb, it decided to go full devil mode and flew up the chimney. Talk about a tough childhood. But here's the kicker. In 1909, this creature apparently decided to go on a publicity tour with sightings reported all over the place. It's like the Jersey Devil decided to have its own coming out party and everyone from Delaware to Maryland was invited. Now, most people think these sightings are just a misidentified animals. I mean, if I saw a weird shadow in the Pine Barrens, I'd probably think it was the Jersey Devil too. Or maybe the Mothman. But that hasn't stopped our winged friends from becoming a bit of a celebrity, with books, movies, and even sports teams paying homage to it. So, is the Jersey Devil real? No. No, it's not. It's probably just yap, but it is one hell of a story to tell around the campfire. Just don't wander too far into the Pine Barrens. I wouldn't. It's kind of scary. 6. Banshee So, the Banshee. Located in Ireland, the land of leprechauns, Guinness, and you guessed it, a ghostly woman who loves to sing. Picture this. You're chilling in the Irish countryside, maybe sipping some tea, and maybe a pint of Guinness, and suddenly you hear this wail. That's the Banshee, a weird ghost lady. Now, the Banshee isn't your average ghost story. Traditionally, she's seen as an old woman in white or grey, with a hairdo that screams, I've given up on salon appointments. Sometimes, though, she goes for this whole young and beautiful vibe, because why not, I guess? Now, the Banshee's main gig, wailing. But it's not just for fun. She's kind of a supernatural death alarm, wailing to signal if someone's about to die. Something I would imagine is about as dreadful to hear in person as a Taylor Swift song truly tragic. Interestingly, the Banshee isn't about causing the deaths. She's more about giving us a heads up, which is pretty nice, but not nice because someone's about to die. Historically, the whole wailing woman might have come from keening. That's a traditional form of vocal mourning. So in a way, the Banshee might be just an ultimate drama queen. Basically Taylor Swift if she was a ghost. Now, the Banshee has become quite a pop culture icon. Like Taylor Swift- Okay, I'll stop. From horror movies to fantasy novels, she's everywhere. Sometimes getting a Hollywood makeover to fit into the horror genre. But at her core, she's still that wailing woman from the Irish hills. Reminding us that sometimes the scariest things are those tied closest to our heritage. Now we're moving on to the scariest creature on the list. Number seven, the Aswang. The creature that probably made a lot of Filipino kids obey their curfew. The Aswang is like a Swiss army knife of mythical monsters. It's got a bit of everything. Vampire, witch, werewolf, Talk about an identity crisis. It's said during the day that Aswang is a quiet villager. He doesn't say much, 
but by night, it turns into something out of a nightmare. It can shapeshift into animals like a large bird or a black dog, or just go full horror movie monster mode. Personally, I'd prefer the first option. I'd much prefer to deal with a bird than a, than a demon monster thing. Guess its favorite hobby. Hunting for victims, because what else is there to do at night? Now, the Asbrang has a particular taste for everything related to death or horror. It's known for its love for human flesh and blood, especially enjoying a late night snack of human. Great. It's also into grave robbing, so it's not only a murderer, it's also a thief. What a menace to society. The story of the Aswang is a blend of ancient Filipino folklore and some good old Spanish influence. The Spaniards during their colonization probably used the Aswang stories to keep people in line, equating to these creatures with demonic entities. Talk about a cultural exchange. In some parts of the Philippines, the Aswang is also linked to witchcraft. It's often those on the outskirts of society who are labeled as Aswangs, which, let's be honest, it's a pretty effective way of self-isolating someone. In summary, the Aswang is the ultimate Filipino folklore multitasker. Part vampire, part witch, and part werewolf. Well, that was one hell of a list. Or the list of hell. Whatever way you want to put it. If you enjoyed this, could you let me know what you thought was the most scary? And just a fun fact, I recorded this video at 3.30am. Yes, it's literally 3.30am right now. So I did risk my life to make this video. I think I deserve at least one sub, but it's up to you. I don't know, think about it.